It's time now for the Kill the Can podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Kill the Can podcast. Hope uh, help everybody's having a wonderful day or evening or wh- whatever time you're listening to this. Um, actually, that that uh, that is something I've been curious about. Uh, drop me a comment and let me know, like, when you're listening to the Kill the Can podcast. Um, and, and I would be curious, like, how you're getting it. Are you are you listening to it? Are you watching on YouTube? Are you watching on Rumble? Are you listening to it uh, through a, a podcast device? I would I would be interested. Um, more than anything, I'm just kind of curious how, how you're listening to us. Um, I got a question the other day about fake dip, smokeless alternative. And, and I don't know if I've done a, a full episode of the podcast kind of dedicated to fake dip. Um, so I thought I'd jump on real quick and, and, and knock that out. Um, so w- when I'm referring to fake dip or smokeless alternative, as you'll see me refer to it on the site, um, the, these are products that contain zero nicotine and zero tobacco and are used as an alternative to whatever product you, you were using previously. Um, they, they offer products in multiple different cuts. So you can have, there are fine cut products, there are long cut products, and these days there are also pouch products. So products that mimic, uh, you know, old school skull bandits. Um, and then these days, especially there is a ton of alternative products out there that are geared toward the nicotine pouch, um, alternative market. So alternatives to Zen alternatives to rogue on and those kind of things. Back when I quit, um, there, there was not a pouch product. Everything was um, was either a fine cut or a long cut. Um, I, I got the question about whether or not these products are considered. Um, well, it, it was a multi prong question. One was the are the products considered safe, and two. Are, are you still allowed to post roll on Kill the Can as a quitter if you're using these products? Um, the short answer to both questions is yes. So let's start with the are they safe? Um, again, these products contain zero nicotine and zero tobacco. Um, most of the products these days are even safe to swallow you don't need to you don't need to spit the juice if you don't want to um obviously you can't swallow if you're using a pouch product i would not recommend you swallow the pouch itself and if you're using a long cut product i would not recommend you swallow the product itself but they're safe to um they're safe to swallow the juices um that being said i I think it's fair to say that if you put anything between your cheek and gum for an extended period of time, you may encounter some irritation. You might encounter, uh, you might deal with some gum recession or those kind of things. But, but again, that would be the same case if you tucked, you know, a cotton ball between your cheek and gum for, you know, 12 hours a day, or, you know, you might get some irritation on the inside of your cheeks and gum if you're chewing on sunflower seeds or beef jerky or, or chewing gum or anything like that. So, um, so the, the, these products are safe. Um, and, and again, I think that the, the kind of uh, the idea behind that particular question was, are they safe uh, as it pertains to, you know, uh, are they safer than, you know, nic- nic- true nicotine products and, you know, those kind of things? So the answer there is yes. Um, let me let me take a step back. I mentioned um, sunflower seeds and gum and, and those kind of things. I would also consider those types of products smokeless alternatives, right? When we're talking about getting away from dip, we're talking away about getting away from chewing tobacco. In my mind, any product that helps you get away from those products 
can be viewed as an alternative. So I know a lot of times when people quit, they're looking for something to kind of continue that habit, continue the action of dipping or chewing or having something in their mouth. Um, these products are great to help you deal with that kind of oral fixation, the physical part of your addiction, which is very real, by the way. Um, you are you're absolutely addicted to the nicotine in these products, in dip and, to, and smokeless tobacco and those kind of things. But there is 100% a real factor when it comes to the physical act of dipping. Um, you know, and, and we, you know, we talk about trigger, trigger events when you quit. Um, if you quit for the first time, you very well may be triggered by doing activities that you have always had a dip in when you did those activities. Um, I could, I, you know, I started dipping when I was 14 years old and I dipped until I was about 30. Um, I never drove a, never drove a car until I quit dipping. And so every time I was in the car, I would either have a dip in or pop one in. And so it took me a long time to get over that physical sensation of driving a vehicle with a dip in my mouth. Um, and, and that's, it's those kind of things where fake dip can be a really amazing tool for somebody that's quitting. Um, these products allow you to continue the act of dipping without the nicotine and the tobacco, without the addictive products to them. Um, now, some will argue that in order to truly be free from your addiction, you need to not only deal with the addictive nature, the drug, i.e. the nicotine, but you also need to get rid of the act, the, the act of dipping. Um, and in general, I would agree with that statement. The caveat to that that I will make is, and again, I will only talk about myself personally, I would much rather chew a can a day of the fake stuff for the rest of my life than ever have another dip of Kodiak, which was my, which was my dip of choice. Um, that being said, um, for me, I chewed fake stuff. I don't know. I chewed, uh, continued to chew fake dip probably for 200, 220 days or so into my quit. And then one day I just didn't need it anymore. I just stopped reaching for it. Um, and I, and I think that is the experience that many people will have. They'll use these products. They will deal with the, the nicotine portion of the addiction. And then eventually that, that physical piece will fall off as well. Um, but again, for me personally, even if that physical piece hadn't have fallen off, I would much rather, um, I would much rather chew fake stuff for the rest of my days than ever go back to being an addict. So again, that's that's kind of one one man's opinion. Um, so like I said, I, I chewed for a, a good 220 days or so. Back when I quit, um, my the, the the options were limited in terms of brands that were out there, um, especially as in comparison to today. Today there are so many quite frankly, amazing products on the market for nicotine quitters out there, alternative products. They, they really are amazing. So um, for me, I really, the only thing that I, I only had a couple of, of options at my disposal. Um, I chewed a ton of Smoky Mountain Chew back in the day. Um, the reason primarily for me was that was the one that I had easiest access to. Um, they... I could actually buy it at retail back in the day at a, at a local grocery store, a giant Eagle. In addition to that, Smoky mountain had, um, national distribution 
at Walmart. So you could actually buy Smoky Mountain at a Walmart. Um, I chewed a ton of Smoky Mountain. I chewed a ton of um, Hooch Snuff, uh, Jake's Mint Chew, you know, Grinds. Grinds is an interesting interesting one. And that one, if you remember the show Shark Tank uh, back in the day, they actually went on Shark Tank. And you could actually um, you can find that clip on YouTube. And I remember that was a huge deal for me back in the day. It was relatively early in my quit. And, and I said, oh my God, like I'm, I'm, my wife and I used to watch Shark Tank religiously. And we saw these guys show up on, on Shark Tank and, and pitching their, you know, their, their smokeless alternative product, which, which was amazing. I had the, I had the pleasure of meeting the Grinds guys way back in the day. I was out in San Francisco for a work conference. And I had the opportunity to kind of visit them and chat with them for a while, which was which was amazing. So um, the, these so then along comes the Internet, right, or at least the advent of, of e-commerce. And nowadays you have so many options out there for smokeless alternative products. Um, if you go to killthecan.org slash fake dip, um, there is we've got a, an entire page with a whole slew of alternative products. We've got links to the reviews that we have done. We've got links to purchase all the products. We've got, uh, in several cases, we've got coupons available for Kill the Can members. Um, uh, one, one caveat, we don't, Kill the Can does not sell any of these products. So all of the links that you see there, they are all going out to the vendor's websites. Um, and, um, you know, I, I get asked often, hey, do, do you sell these products? No, we don't sell any of the products. Um, you will see just about everything that's there. You will see there, there's a link to reviews. We review just about everything that is there. But I will always caveat my reviews by saying um, th- these are very subjective opinions. Like when I give my opinion about a particular fake dip, um, you know, I, I fully understand that m- what I like and, and what you like might be totally different. So I will always ask people when they're asking me for a recommendation of, hey, what's the best fake dip or what's your favorite fake dip? I'm all, I always ask or follow up that question with, okay, well, what flavor are you looking for or what brand are you trying to emulate? And then I can kind of point some people in, in the right direction. Um, for me, currently, the, the, the kind of most... Um, I, I get asked, what's your favorite? And I get what asked, what is the closest thing to the real thing? Um, some people want a fake dip product that was exactly like their former tobacco product, just without the nicotine and tobacco. And other people want something a little bit further away. There are some people that these products are just kind of too close to the real thing and they get, they might get triggered by that a little bit. Um, for me personally, the closest thing, um, maybe to the closest thing to Kodiak, there's Kodiak wintergreen. There's a couple, um, black Buffalo has a product that is remarkably close, um, to the real thing. Um, Hooch has some amazingly similar products. Um, Amarillo snuff is great. I mean, there's a bunch of really, high quality, close to the real thing products out there. Um, the other thing that I will say is many times when you are a, as an example, you're a user of say Kodiak Wintergreen. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Um, sometimes your, some of the, some of my favorite fake dip products are actually very dissimilar to Kodiak wintergreen. So for example, I was never like a flavored chew fan. Um, you know, I didn't like the, you know, the raspberries and the, and the orange and the citrus, you know, like I didn't really care for those types of products. I really stuck to wintergreen and mint and those kind of things. But some of my favorite alternative products are like Tiza as an example. Tiza is an alternative product that is made out of tea. Um, they have one that's called like B- Bangin' Black Cherry, and they've got all sorts of tropical flavors and those kind of things that I absolutely love. So, um, you know, hey, you got a question about fake dip, feel free to shoot me a, a, a comment or a DM or whatever. I'm happy to try and, and point you in the right direction. Um, the, these products, in my opinion, 
are can be a vital tool for somebody that is quitting dip. Um, I've always told people I'm a big fan of these products. Um, I consider them a tool that should be used liberally for somebody that is struggling and somebody that is quitting dip. There was a conversation on our Discord server the other day. Somebody was talking about, hey, I really am struggling when I'm playing video games without my dip. I see myself reaching for my can. In my opinion, that is a perfect opportunity to use a, an alternative product. You can continue to play your video games, continue to do the activity that you so closely associate with dipping just without continuing to feed your addiction. Um, I'm a huge fan of these products. Um, that being said, again, I would agree with the assertion that in order to truly be free, you probably should eventually move away from these products. And the other thing is there is a certain set of people that – Fake dip products will be so triggering to them that it will lead them back to the real thing. Obviously, for those people, I don't think you should be using fake dip products because, again, anything that's making it harder for you to quit is something that you should stay away from. So, But in general, luckily, I, in my experience, that's a relatively small portion of the population that deals with that particular issue. In general... I'm a huge fan of fake dip products. Just make sure you're staying away from anything with nicotine, anything with tobacco, and hopefully it will help you along the way. Um, I appreciate the question. Um, if there are any other questions you want me to talk about, any other topics, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you soon, quitters. Have a good day. Join us again next time for another edition of the Kill the Can podcast.